so my name's Katie Vernon, and um, I have been playing music around Minneapolis, St. Paul, for a long time. But I was always um, I was always the singer out front, and it took me actually a long time to pick up an instrument. I always played the guitar very badly, and always sat home feeling bad about that. And I didn't even have a good guitar; I just had a terrible guitar, and it gathered dust. And I would write songs, and I would just show someone else how to play them, and then I would never pick up the guitar on that song again. So it took me a long time to realize that um, I should probably play and accompany myself. Like, that's a good plan. That's a good goal. Because then no matter how unreliable other musicians are, you can still do your thing. Because trust me, they're unreliable. Maybe you shouldn't trust me, because I'm a musician. But anyway, so... Um, when my band broke up and I uh, kind of didn't really, I didn't play because I just explained that, um, I was kind of lost. It was like the rug came out from under me and I stopped writing for a while and I, um, you know, raised a couple of little kids and kind of gave up a bit on the whole thing and um, that's very sad so we'll turn it around because then I picked up a guitar again and started writing and, you know, they always say write what you know. And what I knew was that I was kind of sitting home with little babies and not really singing much. But I knew that, and I knew that that was kind of what I wanted in life at that time, too. Um, and I had a happy little family, which is a good thing. So I wrote a song about that, and that's this one. It's called This Is It. Switch instruments. 
All right, so uh, I write songs because I prefer singing to talking, but it's nice to talk about songs too. Sometimes um, you don't want to say too much about a song because a self-indulgent songwriter's dream is that other people relate to your songs. And when you're lucky, that happens. I know it's happened for you. Um, and it really is. I mean, you're not just, you know, trying to sound like you just won an award show or something, but that's um, so rewarding and so great when that happens. And I've been lucky enough that this has happened with this song. The name of the song is Peter, but I never actually say the word Peter in it, which I'm glad. Like now I'm like, oh, that was really clever of me because I didn't put a name in it so other people can relate. But um, so the story behind this song the real story is that it's about my oldest brother. He has um, very severe cerebral palsy. He's never been able to communicate. Um, that's not an easy thing to talk about. And um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I usually don't intro the song by even telling people what it's about. Um, but I've had people say to me that um, friends or family that have had strokes or for any reason can't communicate with them, that they've just hearing it, they've made that connection. So. That's a really beautiful thing. So, um, and also taking up the ukulele kind of got me writing different songs. But I could talk about that all night. So, I'll just play the song. very much. So um, I mentioned that the ukulele got me writing again. Um, like I said, I used to look at my guitar and it wasn't that guitar. That's a good guitar. I finally treated myself to a pretty one. But um, I would just look at my guitar and felt like it's six strings were judging me. And uh, I'm like, I know I can't play you. 
But then I picked up a ukulele, and it was so friendly. <laughs> and I think um, I tend to write very sad songs, and you feel very self-conscious, even more self-conscious than just in normal self-conscious levels. Um, playing those in front of people, you know, there's, um, you don't want to make your audience feel sad too much. Um, so this evens it out, because it's like it sounds chipper, and then you go, whoa, that was really sad. So a lot of my songs are very sad. Um, but this gives them some levity and actually just makes it more joyful to play. So um, that's always a good thing. Find your joy. Find your joy and don't trust musicians. All right, that's <laughs> my advice. Um, all right, so I'm going to play another song. And this one um, is an example of doing very little on an instrument and um, letting that give you ideas. So I literally just played around with, I didn't really know how to play the ukulele when I picked it up. So I was like, that sounds pretty. That sounds pretty. If you play them one after the other, that sounds nice. And the song just kind of came. So this is next year. It's kind of a breakup song, which confuses my children. I am happily married. But um, you have to use your imagination too.
Um, so that one's not about uh, musicians, but um, that was um, definitely for me, you know, you never want to become that person that plays in a band and says, this one sounds really good on the record. You should hear it. Like you have to trust your songs, even at their bare bones level. Your one was awesome that it's difficult. You get used to playing a song a certain way and you're like, oh, you should hear the trumpet. But the good news is that um, musicians will find you and they will want to play with you if you um, really try to work on the songs. Because you can sit at home and think, oh, no one ever calls me. And it's like, well, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, it might if you went to high school with some cool people, but I moved to a whole different country. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> so no one was calling me. Um, anyway, I'm getting off topic. Okay, so this is my last song I'm going to do. This is actually the first song I ever wrote on the ukulele. And it makes me laugh now. Because it's really difficult. And I was like showing off and trying to be clever. And then of course I couldn't play it. So I was like... Wah, wah. So um, this also came out of being a, um, a stay-at-home mom, which I was for a while. I would sit at home and um, I was a good mom. But I definitely started drinking a little early in the day. Um, <laughs> just to, you know, take the edge off. <laughs> um, and, you know, you'd watch Oprah at four and think, oh, I'm having a glass of wine, watching my Oprah. This is, this is good. And uh, then, you know, the next thing you know, it's three o'clock and you're watching Dr. Phil with some whiskey. And you're like, I am judging myself. I'm, I'm hitting rock bottom. So I wrote a song about that, kind of recognizing that maybe I had a problem. Maybe I didn't. No judgment, but... It wasn't a life highlight. So anyway, this song is called Five O'Clock. There's a really great trumpet part on this song. <laughs>
I'd like to thank Demo so much for putting this on. And um, I'd especially like to thank Steve because um, he was the one that booked me for my CD release. No one else returned my calls, baby. So thank you for nurturing young and old talent. <laughs> thank you very much. Give me down, step outside through the pouring 